Hello and welcome to EC Electronics. From today onwards, we are going to start the preparation classes for uh, Kerala PSC Polytechnic Lecturer Post. And also this video, that is this syllabus or this series of videos is useful for uh, the preparation of any PSC examination for any post of electronics. That is, we are going to cover uh, in this series all the important concepts or topics which we have discussed uh, on the classes of electronics engineering or electronics diploma uh, on an exam point of view. Okay, so all these classes will be exam point of view classes. Uh, I'll be uh, describing or explaining only the very, very important concepts and problems and important equations on each topic. So if you follow these classes, I'm sure that if you're preparing for any competitive examination of electronics, you'll be able to crack it. Okay, so this is a part one. Uh, so let us see what is the first topic that we are going to discuss. So uh, on these uh, initial videos, we'll be covering all the basic concepts. Okay, in this class, we are going to cover the topics active and passive electronic components and also on LEDs and the comparison between LED and CFL. So these are some basic concepts or basic uh, components of electronics. So uh, first moving on to the very, very basic things, active and passive components. Active components, uh, there are certain active components which we use in uh, daily life or in laboratories. And also there are certain passive components. Now what is the difference between an active component and a passive component? Active component means a component which is by itself able to generate some energy or power is called an active component or it should be able to amplify a signal. Okay, so uh, such devices or such components are called active components. So they are generally sources that is a voltage source and current source we use in our circuits are active components because they generate certain energy or power. They also sometimes consume but mostly they will be uh, considered as or thought of as producers or generators of energy or power. So they are generally sources that is voltage and current source all are active components and they generate power or energy. So these are the very basic concepts you should know about active components. Now moving on to the example battery, power cell, sources that is voltage and current source, transistors, they amplify the signal. So these are some of the very few examples of active components. There is a lot if you google it or if you uh, see in the Wikipedia, there is a lot of examples. It is a, there is a wide variety of examples of active components, passive and also passive components. Now moving on to the next thing that is passive components. So the, it is just opposite to the active components. They only consume. They doesn't generate any energy or power. They just consume it. For example, a resistor. Does it generate any energy? No. It just blocks the flow of current and it consumes some energy and it is dissipated in the form of heat while current is passing through it. Right. Okay. Anyway, a resistor is a passive component because it doesn't generate any energy or power. Next one, capacitor, sensor, also antennas. If you, if you fed some source to the antenna, it will just pass that uh, as signals to the atmosphere. That is the purpose of an antenna. Anyway, these are some examples of passive components. So the passive component, does it generate or uh, create any energy or power? They just consume it. So that is the basic difference between active components and passive components. So you can widely categorize all the components, all the electronic components we use as either active components, that is some, some generate and some consume and passive components. Okay, so this, this is a very basic classification of electronic components. I hope this is clear. Next, moving on to the next topic, which is called LED. Next, let us discuss the concepts of LEDs and also discuss some problems regarding the circuits connecting LEDs. Okay, so uh, these problems will be an additional benefit for you. Uh, so if some problems is uh, coming in examination, you'll be able to answer. Okay, so first moving on to the theory of LEDs. So we have discussed about or we have uh, heard about normal PN junction diodes. So these normal PN junction diodes is uh, made by combining, combining of 
P and N region. Okay. So, anode and cathode region uh, and when this P and N type material are combining, the electron hole pair recombination is happening and there is a barrier forming. So, these are the basic things of diodes. And in order to break that barrier, we need to apply some external potential. And when this barrier is broke, the diode will conduct in one direction. Okay, so that is a very basic thing of a diode. And a normal diode will look like this. It consists of a P-type material and an N-type material. So we call this P-type as anode and this N-type as cathode. So that is a very basic thing. Now, what is the difference between a normal diode and a light emitting diode? The basic difference can be explained with the help of a energy band diagram. This is an energy band diagram. It consists of a valence band and a conduction band. We normally draw valence band and conduction band in energy diagrams. Okay, so this is an energy band diagram. It consists of valence band and conduction band. The electrons are bounded in the valence band. So when the electrons break the bone and become free and when it moves towards the conduction band, if it is a case of a normal diode, the energy uh, produced due to the breaking of this bond is in the form of heat. Whereas in case of light emitting diodes, this energy produced here is in the form of photons or light. So when the electron moves from the valence band to the conduction band, the energy is being released in the form of light. So that is happening in the case of a light emitting diode. So that is the difference between the light emitting diode and the normal diode. In case of normal diode, this energy is released in the form of heat. Whereas in case of uh, this light emitting diode, this energy is released in the form of light or photon. Okay, so that is why the symbol of a LED consists of these arrows. These arrows indicate nothing but light. So these LEDs are special diodes. They are capable of emitting light. Okay, next. Uh, generally, in case of normal diodes, we only use a single material or a single semiconductor substrate or a material for the formation of it or for making it. Whereas in case of light emitting diodes, we use compounds, for example, gallium arsenide or gallium nitride or indium tin oxide. These are some materials which are being used for manufacturing LEDs. And based on this material composition, light being emitted from this LED, the color also getting is getting varied. Okay, so that is the basic things. These are some of the compounds used for manufacturing of LEDs. Now, what are the various types of LEDs? Actually, I have done a detailed video on LED uh, and I'll uh, link that in the description box. Okay, please do have a look on that. Now, uh, going on to the type of LED, there is through hole LEDs. There are SMD LEDs, which is surface bounded LEDs, which will look like a small chip. Then RGB. RGB means it emits red, green and blue color, three colors. Uh, so then tricolor LED, high power LED. So these are the uh, various types of LEDs and the various applications. We now nowadays use these LEDs in a lot of applications in our household and also in office and everywhere. We are using LEDs and uh, the various applications are for lighting purpose. We use LEDs in house, then for automobiles, automobile light, camera flashes, then traffic signals, medical devices. Let us try to understand some problems and the concepts of some problems using LEDs or the circuit with LEDs. So there is a voltage source VS here. There is a uh, light emitting diode uh, connected. So when the current flows through this LED, what will happen? Or when the diode uh, LED is forward bias, what will happen? It emits light, right? So the voltage drop across this LED is VF. And the series resistor connected along with the uh, the LED is RS. Now the value of RS is given by the equation Vs that is a total voltage minus Vf. It is a voltage drop across the diode by IR is the equation. Okay, so if you don't know IR then it is equal to IF because in series connection the current is same. So if the forward current of the LED is IF, IF is the forward current, Vf is the voltage drop across uh, LED, voltage drop across LED, Vs is the source voltage, then this is the equation. Now consider that more than one LED is connected in series. 
Now there are various uh, built-in potentials or voltage drops across each LED junction. So if there are three LEDs connected, then the total voltage will be equal to Vf into three, where Vf is the the built-in potential or the voltage drop across the one LED. So total voltage will be Vf into three. So like this uh, will happen when the LEDs are connected in series. So anyway, so these are some type of problems which you can face in your examinations with circuits having LEDs. So either the question can be uh, find the value of series resistance or it can be what is the forward current if the series resistance value is given or it can be the uh, what is the voltage drop across the LED. So these type of questions you can face in your examination. Next we are going to discuss the concept of CFL and that we are going to compare uh, CFL with LEDs. Okay, so uh, earlier we are using the filament bulbs uh, in which uh, there will be a, a bulb and inside there is a filament. Mainly tungsten is used for manufacturing of filament. So when current is uh, passing through this tungsten filament, it will get heated up and it will uh, emit light or it will glow and it produces light. So this is the, uh, the older days light. So it is a filament light. Nowadays also we are using it but now we have moved on to CFL and then we have then moved on to LED. So in case of a CFL what is happening is uh, there is a tube and uh, there is some circuitry for passing current through this tube. So inside this tube there is argon vapor which is an inert gas and also there is mercuric vapor. So this cavity is filled with argon and mercuric vapor. Okay. So when current pass through this tube, ultraviolet rays are produced inside the tube. This ultraviolet rays are not visible. But what will happen uh, uh, is that this ultraviolet rays will excite the fluorescent coating present in the, inside the walls of the tube. So this tube in the inner walls is coated with some fluorescent material, most commonly phosphorus. So this fluorescent material will get excited and this fluorescent material will glow due to the ultraviolet rays. This ultraviolet rays will excite the fluorescent coating and will uh, lead to the emission of light. So that is a working principle of a CFL. So CFLs are compact fluorescent lamps and these, uh, this lamps will actually is actually emitting light due to the uh, presence of fluorescent material present inside the uh, inner walls of the tube. Okay, so that is a working principle of a CFL. Now, what is the difference or comparing the CFL with that of LED? Which one is better? So, if you compare uh, CFL, there is a lot of health problems associated with this CFL. If you, if the cavity or the tube is broke, there is mercury filled, uh, mercury filled inside the tube, which is uh, really poisonous or highly poisonous so it can uh, lead to health problems and also the lifespan of LEDs are very very high as compared to CFL. So this cavity or the tube of the CFL is filled with argon and mercury so this can disintegrate and it can uh, lead to the uh, that is that uh, the the CFL can get damaged easily whereas compared to LED it is a material and uh, that material is emitting light so it can last longer and also the power consumption is less as uh, less for LED as compared to CFL and there is no radiation issues in LED and this LED lamps are really brighter as compared to the CFL. So this is the uh, basic comparison between CFL and LED. Both has different working principle. One is actually a fluorescent type of a lamp which is emitting uh, light due to the fluorescent material whereas uh, in case of LEDs the light is actually getting produced due to the uh, recombination of electrons and holes which we have discussed by, while discussing the energy band diagram. Okay, so that is a basic difference between the LED and CFL. Okay, so these are some topics which I have included in this video. In the next part of this uh, videos or this series, we will be discussing new concepts. Okay, so I hope that these videos uh, will be useful for your preparation. If yes, please do give it a thumbs up and also share these videos with maximum of friends. And if you want more videos, please do subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and keep on watching.